Okay, so first I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Tomai Gunders. I'm the centre lead at Christ the King Sixth Form Colleges. We are located in, we're a free site institution located in London, South East London precisely. But as you can see from um, my partners that are joining me today, we are located throughout the whole of Greater London. So we've got East Surrey College, Elaine with us, um, Jim from Shooters Hill College, Joyce unfortunately couldn't make it today from Lucian College and Sam Amin from St Charles Catholic Sixth Form College. So together we worked on this project this year, which is now almost in its third year, um, on improving the motivation and engagement of um, maths GCSE students in FE colleges by using maths specialist tutors as mentors. Um, so for us, um, every year, the project's got better and better from the findings that we found from the action research. Um, and this year, when we get to the final stages of the slides, um, Sam will talk you through our findings, which I think for, for us was actually quite an interesting find this year with the impact of COVID. some reason, I can't move to my next slide. Don't you love it when that happens, eh? <laughs> love it. Um, so here are our um, key principles. Hopefully you can still see this. Um, so the well, first thing we wanted to do is make sure that the designing of our mentoring program um, was unique in the fact that it could be taken both face-to-face -face and online. And we had to do that in, in from January to March time. Um, we wanted to investigate um, which aspects of the mentoring program had the greatest um, impact on our student attitudes and why. We wanted to analyze whether the mentoring program had an impact on student attendance. And then we wanted to really break that down into stu student characteristics as well um, and looking at exactly um, who was benefiting from the mentoring more than others and why, that, why those things were. And we also this year wanted to look at their attainment and their progress throughout the year by looking at both internal and the councilled, I guess, tags this year. Um, and obviously what we're doing right now, hopefully we're meeting that objective, sharing our results as far as possible nationally. So the first thing for us is, we really wanted to look at what the difference was between tutoring versus mentoring, because I think sometimes they, they can be um, come hand in hand, but they are very distinct. Um, so Goodland um, was one of our main researchers that we looked at in our literature review. And as you can see from the table, he very much um, broke down the difference between tutoring and mentoring. So once we had sort of researched what the difference were between the two, we then looked at what we actually wanted um, our mentors to do on site. Um, and then Elaine in a moment will, um, will speak about kind of what our project, what, what, what the things the mentor would be doing and how this links back to Goodland. So which parts were actually tutoring and which parts were actually mentoring. So we did actually end up with a, a kind of like a mixed model. What was really evident from our research though, was that one actually can't be the other. So there are the three types of, I guess, support that you can offer students in the classroom. So a coach, a mentor, and a tutor. Um, and from the flow diagram that you can see in front of you, the Venn diagram, one can be another, but actually um, the, best, the best form of the mix between a mentor and a tutor is actually trained to be a mentor and that mentor then tutors rather than the opposite. So you can't really train someone to be a tutor and for that person to have those skills to be a mentor. So what we really wanted to focus on is making sure that we had a legacy left on this action research project where we had a bespoke training package that anyone can take, mentor, um, train someone to be a mentor with all those skills that are needed. Um, as long as they've got the subject knowledge and they um, have had experience in tutoring pr previously, um, the mentoring role for us was actually seen as much more significant than the actual tutoring role. So we have now finally got a bespoke um, training package um, for someone to develop into a, into a mentor. So now I'm going to hand over to Elaine. Thanks, Tume. Good morning. Um, so as Tume said, our approach was, was a mixture of, of the two. So we had elements of tutoring in that the, the individual students um, were recruited because they needed subjects, they needed the subject knowledge for maths to support them in their studies, many of them wanting to raise their grades um, uh, and, and filling gaps in knowledge. And so for that, they, they would require the, uh, a specialist tutor, which um, was one element of it. But more than that, many of them come with poor experiences, um, vulnerabilities, anxieties, a number of things that are impacting their maths learning outside of the class centered on um, 
confidence mostly, um, but as I say, a range of anxieties. And so our mentors were there to support with that element as well. Um, and so that's where we were very much more focused on the mentoring. The other element that tied in with mentoring was this was outside of a classroom. So they would attend their, their usual lessons with their specialist tutors. Um, and then these sessions were smaller sessions that we ran for an hour and a half or between an hour and an hour and a half across the centers. Um, and that's the mentoring element. Tutoring came in within those sessions. Um, they were always a small group. Um, so they're up to a maximum of five within that class. Um, and so it wasn't necessarily the one-to-one -one approach um, that, that you would have as a mentor, but it was a small group approach. And so it had that element of tutoring within it. Um, it wasn't a short project. So we ran it across uh, from January for right up until the, the end of March. So it ran over several months and was a continual weekly contact, weekly engagement, whether online or whether um, face to face. And so it, from that element, it ticked the mentoring. So it was very much a, a kind of combined package of the best of all. Um, what we were looking at in terms of the, the literature um, was that research stated um, students wanted a mentor or a tutor because they want higher grades. Um, they want to get their grade fours or above so that they can progress, um, move into what they want to do in terms of college, university, etc. cetera. Um, and what's really interesting is when we had a look at the student responses after their mentoring program, um, it, it tallied. Um, it said that the reason was they wanted to improve their grades in GCSE maths for exactly the same reasons as the literature had stated. The other part was um, they wanted extra help. Um, that came through um, from the literature. And actually, it was a, a kind of joint third place in, in the post survey questionnaire as well that they're wanting that extra help. So it was interesting to see the literature becoming uh, re reflected in reality. So our program started with, as Tume said, the bespoke training package uh, for our mentors. So they were provided by CFEM. Um, they prepared the mentors for some of the barriers that they might face, some of the challenges with disengagement, um, poor previous experiences, um, a range of um, pastoral needs that students may need. Um, they were uh, given a, a kind of package that they could work through at their own pace. They had the contact, um, certainly with uh, mentors who had done it previously uh, at East Surrey, um, with myself and with Tume, and a, a really good support network in place for the mentors before they got started. Um, and what we're looking at is using that really as an ongoing process so that we can sustain mentors going forward as we feel that they've had such an incredible impact. And that flow chart that Tume showed at the start was absolutely terrific. It is a really good process to begin with the mentoring and lead that into tutoring as it, it, it reflects how students feel within those learning environments. Um, and then the frequency and length, as you can see there, is just how many minutes uh, students were spending with their maths mentor per week. So because these were run outside of the classrooms, it may be that the session was run for an hour or an hour and a half, and some students that came in um, early or potentially left um, early for other needs, etc., was also slightly impacted by COVID. But the majority of students are spending around an hour and a half a week with their mentor. And I will pass on to Tume. Hi. Um, so the impact of the um, the impact that we saw from the data collection is now over to Sam Amin from St. Charles. Hello, everyone. Um, on the on the impact, we looked at the attendance uh, during the remote sessions. Uh, and face-to-face, -face. Uh, the attendance in the remote sessions was about 85% present and face-to-face -face was 73. So it went down when it went to face-to-face. -to -face. Um, and 
So, but ironically, when we interviewed the students, they actually said that they preferred face to face, yet the attendance for that was a little bit lower. Uh, we put that down to uh, the convenience factor. Uh, they're less likely to miss lessons if they can just attend it from home uh, on their iPad. Um, some students may have been self isolating, and that may have affected um, the attendance face to face afterwards. Um, and there, there is also the issue that it doesn't affect the quality of the mentoring, whether it's online or face-to-face, -face, it makes it, it may not make a difference to that. If you can have the next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, one of the key questions, which Julie in the earlier presentation uh, uh, highlighted as well, is before, before mentoring, only 6% uh, said they were uh, confident with their maths. Um, and after mentoring, that went up to 60%, uh, saying they, they agree or strongly agree that their confidence in mass has improved. Uh, that's a great statistics because that they're 10 times more confident, uh, it can be argued, or uh, 10 times more of them are more confident. Uh, and that was a great statistic to see. Can we have the next slide, please? Now these bars, um, if we look at these bars, we've got, uh, 80, uh, they say that 85% um, of the students agreed or strongly agreed that they developed a good relationship with their mentor. They feel their mentor understood their strengths and weaknesses. They've gotten better at mass and would recommend mentoring. And the remaining two bars, more than 75% agreed or strongly agreed uh, that they are more positive about mass and they actually spent more time doing mass by themselves, uh, which is also um, a really great statistic to show that the experience was, was very positive for them and motivating. Um, but the key thing is the confidence. They're just more confident attempting questions and doing more by themselves. And it was nice to see the students say that themselves in Julie's presentation just earlier. Okay, and I will now hand back to, to my. Thank you, Sam. Um, just very quickly, we wanted to make sure we captured as well through, in, through an interview process, um, which was recorded, the mentor's perspective of how they thought the sessions were going with the, with the learners and then from the learner's perspective. So the mentor's view about the mentees was that um, students um, wholly were positive about the mentoring experience, um, even those who were a bit reserved to begin with. Um, they said that they felt like students felt more relaxed in the non-classroom environment. So some of our mentors actually, before they started mentoring, went into a classroom environment to observe how students were in a classroom so that they could have a comparison to how they were sort of behaving in their mentoring sessions. Um, and students en enjoyed the fact that they, um, students were enjoying the fact that they could explain methods, um, which they wouldn't normally do in a classroom environment. The mental view, the view on the experience and the role was that they found it very rewarding, which is just as important for the students' gain. It's also important for the mentors' gain. Uh, we have to remember that some of our mentors were undergraduate students from our local University of Greenwich, and some of them were actually um, support assistants within the college themselves, and they were hired through the CFM project to take on this role. So they weren't maths teachers within the department and um, they were very separate roles um, so they found the um, experience very rewarding very pleasant and they said that they um, they could leave students to attempt questions and then almost like feed in every now and again when they were making errors or guide them through gaps in knowledge so it wasn't overbearing they almost it was very much student-led and um, from the learner's perspective before being more, more, uh, mentored they won't go through this but it's the usual they often struggled they found it really difficult to keep up with the content in class and they found that lesson was too fast paced maybe they didn't like the teacher's approach or wouldn't, um, um, couldn't ask many questions in class they didn't feel like they could ask questions in class and they struggled to see the um, focus and um, see any improvement but during the mentoring they felt comfortable asking questions that really resonated with all the interviews that we conducted with students they said it found it so much more easier approaching a mentor to ask them questions as opposed to being in class they actually felt like they had a voice and was being heard which is unfortunate really why that's not happening in the classroom but it does um, they started actually enjoying maths and they felt more confident and obviously that reflects in our in our um, data on a lot on the previous two slides where their confidence had a massive jump from before and after. Um, and the perce perception of maths is they feel like they're more confident at those skills. Um, and they found themselves speaking much more um, in those sessions, which is fantastic. Um, and last but not least, um, I'm wary of time, Josh. But last but not least, I really wanted to make sure, which we hadn't done in previous years, which we thought might be really important this year, is to look at the progress that they've made over time um, with the mentoring 
so first of all, we really wanted to look at, okay, so um, of our cohort who are being mentored, who are in their first, second, third um, year, and who had an SEN um, status as well to see who need, who might have needed that extra support or might have already had a TA in the classroom, for example. Um, so you can see a high proportion of students were our second year, um, first year students, but um, of those, actually the highest proportion that actually got a grade four at the end of um, the summer, um, the summer 21 tag submissions was actually our second year students. And that seemed to concur a lot with our whole cohort analysis as well, where it is generally speaking our second year um, students that are getting the grade four at that time of, um, of, their, of their progression in GCC maths. Um, in the blue section of this table, I just want to make it really clear that we monitored progress um, as was calculated um, from their entry grade to what they were awarded in summer. So that's how we calculated for this instance their progress. Um, and progress was calculated as one level, one grade or above, or two grades and above. Um, so again, here you can see that um, of the first year students, sixty-eight percent of them who were um, being mentored went on to well made progress. So if, if even if it's a grade one to a two or two to a three, and and again second, third, and our um, SDN status students as well. So that's for us was really quite um, um, interesting to look at. Um, we narrowed that down a little bit more. So, for example, overall, 52% of the mentees actually achieved the grade four. Um, this is uh, obviously above where, where the national currently stood in a, in a non-COVID year, but also was much more um, greater than our own individual college um, pass rates. Um, and when you looked at the number of grades they actually increased by, on average, students went up by 1.0566 of a grade increase from their entry grade to the summer 21. Now, the largest proportion of these students were actually from Christ the King Emmanuel, our Lucian site. So I just wanted to give you just a little bit of a flavour or comparison between that and the biggest cohort that actually participated in the mentoring programme. So our CTK Emmanuel students, the whole cohort, um, those who weren't being mentored, um, their grade increase was 0.743. So it just gives you a bit of an idea about um, the types of students that we had on the mentoring programme and the comparison between the two. So that for us was quite positive. Um, and then there was a 0.6, uh, 0.6, grade increase from the start of the mentoring programme, which was in January, to the very end, which was in summer. Now that was based on not just their entry, but if they were entered into November, 2020 as well. So that was calculated on the best of the two. Um, so that was our program in, an, in, in a quick 15 minutes. Um, hopefully we will get all the findings um, into the report for your reading um, later. But if anyone has any questions, more than happy to answer some in the chat.